And I must say, uh, it's very important for us uh, that you're here for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, because we had the chance and the honor to get to know each other at an ICD conference already last year in Brussels. Uh, but beyond that, actually, the connections between the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy in Indonesia go back even further. Uh, I'm grateful, actually, that you have an excellent ambassador also in Berlin, His Excellency Ambassador Pratomo, uh, who's uh, not only a member of our advisory board, but really quite active in the activities of the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. Uh, he speaks on many occasions to our conferences, uh, also for our young leaders. We had the very high privilege of actually welcoming your Minister of Creative Economies uh, last year for a major event that we did in March, uh, where one of the main partners and sponsors was actually the Indonesian government. Uh, so we had a wonderful event with the Minister of Creative Economy uh, here in Berlin with Indonesian dance and music and food. So it was really wonderful. And I think Indonesia in many ways is a very important country when it comes to cultural diplomacy. Uh, as we know, the highest uh, Muslim population of the world is in Indonesia. And you really have a multiculturalism and a diversity there, which I think really is quite fascinating, uh, where I think many models for multiculturalism could even be taken from Indonesia. So I'm really very, very honored that you're here, first of all, uh, because of you yourself and the contributions that you've already made to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. Secondly, given the great tradition that we've had cooperating with Indonesia, uh, we very much hope this tradition will continue. Uh, and I think in many ways, we have a lot to learn from you uh, and also your country. Uh, and we're very happy to have you here. Uh, let me say a few words uh, about His Excellency, uh, the Ambassador Arif Havaz uh, Orgaseno. Uh, His Excellency uh, studied initially at Harvard Law School, as well as at the University of Diplomacy. Negro uh, in Indonesia. In 2012, he became a member of the Advisory Council of the Asian Society of International Law, and since 2010, he has been the ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia uh, to the Kingdom of Belgium, head of the mission to the European Union, and ambassador to the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. The lecture topic that he's chosen today, I think, fits in perfectly, not only to today's themes, but also that of the conference, the use of innovative concepts of intercultural dialogue to build friendships and foster trust between civil society groups at the global level. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very, very warm welcome for His Excellency, Ambassador Arif Havaz uh, Orgoseno. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for the kind words that you have extended to me. Uh, I would also like to uh, take this opportunity to introduce my colleague, Indonesian Ambassador to Western DC, Dr. Jalal. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, maybe you are wondering why uh, I travel all the way from Brussels to Washington to discuss uh, issues on uh, cultural diplomacy. I think one of the things that I would like to share with you is is projects that we have with uh, European colleagues uh, in different ways uh, at the union level and as well as the bilateral level. And also why uh, Indonesia has taken the initiative to, to be out there and uh, be one of the countries that uh, promote cultural diplomacy in a, in a different way. Uh, you have heard different speakers uh, yesterday and also today talking about uh, the issue of cultural diplomacy or uh, soft power is not only a pop culture. I agree with them completely. Uh, pop culture, it's uh, very nice things uh, to do and also very nice thing in terms of promoting one's uh, country's uh, profile. But that is not enough uh, in trying to build a much more uh, understanding uh, different on different uh, cultures from different parts of the world. The third uh, thing that, I that, that, that actually put Indonesia uh, in its initiative is I think is the fact that the world has changed. The world has changed uh, dramatically. Uh, we heard uh, the Under Secretary uh, State mentions about the uh, jazz musicians, uh, American bas basketball players, as part of the diplomacy in the Cold War. You have Forrest Gump going for a ping pong diplomacy. <laughs> and uh, this is one of the, the feature of uh, cultural diplomacy during the Cold War, which I think things have changed dramatically. We don't have any more walls. We have a digital connection this day a digital connection that actually uh, brought down governments in North Africa and uh, this will continue on to do so in a much more uh, speedy manner in the future. We have also the increasing non-state actors. This is another uh, element uh, today that we face and also 
the world has changed dramatically in terms of the movement from decision making from the west to the east. I'll give you a number about economic development that probably gave volumes in itself. Last year, Indonesia grew at 6.5%. We managed to grow from $90 billion GDP in 1999 to $1 trillion last year in just less than 15 years. McKinsey reported that we will become six or seven trillion dollar economy by 2030, we will be larger than Germany. And last year, European Union grew minus 0.6 percent. I think the word growth in terms of European Union is, 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 is a problem in itself. The U.S. grew at 2 percent and probably will be around that number in, in the next year or so. So this shows that the uh, the GDP will be different in 2030. The world will be different. We've already seen it. And uh, that's why the United States has this uh, policy of pivoting to Asia and uh, Asia Pacific, as a matter of fact, where Europe is still not sure what to do with Asia. Uh, they are still very much looking at their own internal problem. And this, I think, gave also a, a responsibility for for countries emerging powers to take to take the uh, itself uh, to be one of the regional if not global leaders in trying to bring in the issue of cultural uh, diplomacy the old methods of simply having an arts project or photographic exhibitions or painting exhibition it doesn't work anymore if you really want to bring a connectedness if you really want to bring understanding if you really want to bring uh, partnership. We need to have a much more uh, different way of doing things because what cultural diplomacy is for today is different with what we know in, in, in the old days. It's, it's for the purpose of uh, the fight against stereotyping, it's for the purpose of against uh, radicalisms, and it's for the purpose of uh, actually promoting more of a digital interconnectedness. So we have a number of a different uh, activities that we do ourselves because Indonesia itself is a, an experience, an experiment also at the same time of uh, cultural diplomacy. Indonesia is a country of uh, 250 million people. We are 200 different ethnics. We speak about 250 different languages. There are five different uh, religions in Indonesia. Uh, we have a country of uh, three time zones and it's, 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 it's a large country in itself in terms of how we relate to each other uh, internally. Now, we are majority Muslim, uh, but at the same time Indonesia is democracy, Indonesia is an open economy, and Indonesia has growth of 6.5% and growth 5% in the last five years. In itself, it's a successful experiment, I would say, uh, from a dictatorship through a democracy. So we want to share this experience. We don't want to teach. We don't want to uh, lecture. We want to share it with our, our colleague in the world. Uh, we established what we call Bali Democracy Forum. It's a forum of head of states, about 10 to 11 other states. They would go to Bali every year and have a, have a discussion on democracy. The last uh, Bali Democracy Forum, we have the uh, Prime Minister of Turkey, we have President of Iran, uh, we have Prime Minister of Australia, we have uh, President Hamid Karzai, and they are having a session like this. Uh, each of them speak about one hour, and they have a direct contact with the uh, audience. It's a very uh, beautiful moment in the, in the sense that people can actually uh, talk about the D word, democracy, without the burden of being lectured or having Americans or Europeans coming to the, to the table and telling them this is good for you. So this is something that we see as a, 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 an approach that uh, gives a very strong uh, angle that democracy is not only a Western product, that democracy is not only for 
the Western society. And I think this, this has been working pretty well. We have actually established a structure under the Bali Democracy Forum called what they call the Institute of Peace and Democracy. And on this, in this institute, we, we have a discussions with a colleague from Egypt, five times already. We have Egyptian, Egyptian politicians, we have Egyptian uh, journalists, uh, NGO leaders uh, to have a discussion with us on how we are able to uh, have a transition from authoritarian military government to a democracy. We have done that with our Tunisian colleague. We send constitutional uh, uh, experts on constitutional law. And this is something that we are doing uh, not very much in a fanfare of the media, but uh, we have seen a number of uh, positive results uh, on, on the ground itself. Now, this is one uh, activity we do it ourselves, but we also have activities that uh, we do it with, uh, with Europeans at the uh, grassroots level. We have a very interesting program called Imam Exchange. There is an exchange of Imam, of Muslim clerics, of Indonesians and Europeans. Uh, we, we have Imam Exchange from the UK, we have Imam Exchange from France, we have Imam Exchange also from uh, Russia. Uh, we have Imam from Russia going to Indonesia and we have Indonesian Imam going to different parts of the uh, European Union. This is a very interesting program. Uh, we have uh, been receiving a very positive feedback and uh, the government role is just to facilitate uh, the process. And this actually creates a lot of understanding on Islam, on how uh, Indonesia practice Islam, on how uh, we believe that this is...